The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over those five mistakes most canners make, as well as life under your soil. Our guest is author Teresa Rooney, and we'll answer your garden questions. The hour is full, and it starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy you've taken a little time out of your day to be part of ours. This is the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, and why not make that grass a little bit gr- look a little bit greener, as well as preserving what you grow. If you want to be part of the program, if just listening does enough for us we thank you for that but if you want to partake in the program you can do that in two very simple avenues one being you can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com that's gardentalkradio at gmail.com or if you'd like to give us a call you can do that as well on the proclamation hotline brought to you by proclamation goods that number is 1-800-927-SHOW 1-800-927-7469, toll-free, coast-to-coast. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. Proclamation Goods. All right. Well, Holly, you are not uh, a certified master canner, but you've taken a number of courses with certified master canners. And we're going to go over the mistakes that top five most common mistakes people make when they are going to attempt canning and we encourage people to can but to do it correctly and safely right and that's that's the important part is to to be safe and be correct and not um not take canning chances uh canning is one of those activities and correct me if i'm wrong where shortcuts are not encouraged or welcomed and can be to some degree, detrimental to yeah. your health. Yeah. If you do this, oh, we're just going to mm, speed this up. You can't do that with no. this. No, so not to scare anybody from canning or anything like that, but... We keep it real. We keep it real, and botulism is very real and still very much a thing, so don't think that you, you can not have that happen to you, and that's why it's important to be safe. Now, anybody could can. Right. Anybody can be a canner. You just got to do it right, and here are five... A common mistakes canners will make and we'll give you a bonus one here at the end but first i guess the first one is we, we, we're not going to get in the uh, the jams and the jellies or the the deep portion of how to can and what not to, we're just going to give you some of the mistakes people make we've covered how to can and gearing up for canning and uh, that type of process in videos right. and in other programming here so not filling your jars to the proper height yeah so this is important because if you fill them too low or too high, if you fill them too high, they could, um, the pressure, even just from like water bath canning, could cause the jar to break. If you fill them too low, then it might not, If then you won't get the proper seal. What is that term used for the proper headspace? There it mm-hmm. And if you're not sure about headspace or how to measure it, there's a tool called a headspace measurer, and you can use that. It's very helpful. It usually comes in a kit, otherwise you can... Definitely order one separately. Um, and then your recipe will say X amount of headspace. Is there a general rule of thumb for certain things? Yes, but you always want to follow whatever the recipe says. Canning is a science. Uh, this is, uh, you know, whenever you, if, if you are know somebody or have seen the actual operation of a laboratory environment, they don't take shortcuts. It's precise this and precise that. Same thing going on in the kitchen when you're doing canning. Right. So shortcuts and jar breaks. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, explain. So any any sort of shortcut is is not good in the canyon world. But when I say shortcuts in jar breaks, it means like you want to do a hot jar, hot food, hot canner. We've lived this. Where Con- we were- consistency would that be the word to use here? Um, just everything's got to be yeah, alike. Yeah, consistency. Yeah. But just you know, making sure that you don't take a shortcut. And mm-hmm. one example I had was when you and I were canning tomatoes, we had room temperature jars. We put hot tomatoes into the room temperature jar. Put the that then into the canner, and what happened? It uh, broke. It broke. And then, of course, we hear this pop noise, and we were like, what is that? I don't know what that is. Fill the next jar. Fill the next jar. Put it in there. So then we broke two ca- jars of tomatoes. And if you know, you know, canning whole tomatoes or crushed or whatever, it's a process. You have to, you know, make sure the peels are off the tomatoes and, and whatnot. And if it doesn't work out, you... It's sad. Over tightening of jars. This is a very common uh, mistake that is seen very repetitively on social media posts going, why is my jar lid look like this? Yeah, you were guilty of this for uh-huh. a while where you were like, I'm just going to crank it on there before we put in the canner. So you don't need to you know, be the Hulk and screw it on as t- tight as you can. You can do what's called finger tight, which means like you just... Tighten it, and that's good. Not not like uh, you're going to put it back in the fridge and it might get shook up or and, something. And you will know if you over-tightened it because the lid, when coming out of the the processor, either the water bath or pressure canner, it will have buckled. It will have pinched up, and the jar, the lid, the metal flat portion will be um, blown, up, blown up because the air cannot do, the, the science can't do what it needs to do in order to properly seal the jar. Right. So not following a safe recipe, but I got it online. Right. So you want to use recipes um, from a safe, reputable source. So this includes things like ball canning, um, any sort of master. Well, canner. ball canning what, in that fresh preserving dot yeah uh, dot com dot org. Dot okay. Com. Um, a master canner, a better homes and gardens, any sort of yeah, any sort of master canner. Um, Taste of Home is another one that has good canning recipes, and those are probably the main three for, um, if you go to the library and you're like, I'm going to check out some canning books, you want to kind of stay within like the last 15 years or so. If you, it's hard to wrap your head around this, but if you find something from the 90s, it's not within 15 years. The, the 90s, like early 90s, that was 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but a lot of people... Think like the 90s was 10 years ago. Well, the 90s is 30 years from the 90s was the 60s, which is the same distance as it now. From okay, there. just stop. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, the 90s were a great time. I had a fun time and I'm so glad social media was not around. But it's, but it's a safe you want thing. To, you want to make sure last 15 years. So early 2000s, absolute max. It's um, nice to collect yeah. the, the recipe jar, the ball canning books of the classic, you know, the, the old style ones, but it's not safe. Now, what? does one do if they have an old recipe that they would like to use in to honor a past loved one who was a very active canner you can, how do they find out you or could, to make it safe um you could reach out to a master canner and ask them to review the recipe and there's no shame in that and a lot of times they don't even have to tweak that much but i just want to explain you're probably thinking like how has food science really changed that much well as a as a, a society we our food science has really changed. Um, so tomatoes are less acidic, or than just they used the density to. of the food too. Right. Yeah. So let me just finish here. Yeah. So tomatoes are uh, less acidic than they used to be. So now you have to add acid to your canned tomatoes or your pasta sauce, salsa, what have you. Um, same thing with. You know, jams and jellies, those recipes may not have varied a lot, but you don't know. You don't know if the sugar content has changed or um, something where you may need to add more pectin, things like that. So because our food system is always changing, we're getting, as a society, further and further away from these heirloom varieties and original cultivar of produce. This is why things change. And also, even with pressure canning, you know, we learn Joey's uh, grandparents' parents used to a can green beans with a water bath canner and now that's no longer safe so it's just a matter of as things change over time and just like people are living longer people are living longer because they're not canning questionable things 
<laughs> and questionable methods because food safety has changed as well. How can one find a local master canner in their area? They could contact their um, you like university extension. Okay, mm-hmm. and they would be able to direct them in a proper direction. And I know there's some in every state because I follow a few on Instagram, mm-hmm. so they should be able to help you. Storing the jars with or without the rings on, what is the answer? You want to store them without the rings on. Why? Because something. So we're we're canning. We're literally putting vacuum sealed food into a jar. And that food could go bad at some point. That vacuum seal could expire and the lid could pop off. If you have the ring on, the lid could pop off and then it could reseal itself. And that's gross. And we have done the, we've left the rings off. And in the shelving of can jars, I believe it was pasta sauce, we did have that jar pop off. And we did see the mold and everything, so we did discard it, but we've seen that something went wacky inside that jar, and because we didn't press, crack the, crack, have a ring on it, we were able to remove it and discard it safely, so keep that in mind. So those are just some of the mistakes in which one may make when canning. If you have questions about proper canning procedures, do not hesitate to reach out to us at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com or give us a call toll-free, coast-to-coast, at 1-800-927-SHOW. Well, we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Just like we talked about canning, we know you care about where your food comes from. And canning preserving is great, but what about the meat? At Walton's Inc., you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created MeatGistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. And they have their full line of meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's, everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50 to save 10% off orders of 50 or more and get free shipping. And when we come back, we're going to discuss life under your soil in the garden. You're listening to Gardening with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. It's a struggle to find fruit that isn't a disappointment or a waste of money, especially peaches at the grocery store. You bring them home, they turn mealy and gross. Well, Tree Right Fruit Company has the answer. They deliver fruit straight from the farm, obsessed with quality, so you can actually experience the joy of a great tasting fruit. Love Georgia peaches? Tree Ripe delivers the best peaches you'll ever eat directly from the farm within days of being picked. Peach season starts June 15th and goes through August 4th. In July, they also deliver Michigan blueberries. You can find them at over 400 Peach Stops events throughout the Midwest or have fruit delivered directly to your home. All the event details and ordering information can be found at their website, tree-ripe.com. An extra bonus for you listeners, get 10% off your first purchase when you order online only, tree-ripe.com, by using coupon code HOLLY10, H-O-L-L-Y-1-0. Make watering easy. Dripworks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. In Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night, dries clear, and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money-back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat. It can't be beat. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. 
The water hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The water hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk white flies are another sap sucking soft bodied insect like aphids they prevent plant growth by feeding on your plants and sucking the nutrients from them leaves will look wilted and molted but also become coated with a sticky substance called honeydew which is secreted by white fly nips and adults Spraying the amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator around, under, and all over the plant can help rid your plant of these aggressive pests. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the day of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew try a free sample, visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Are you tired of mixing and matching soil amendments to give your garden what it needs to flourish? Try Climate Guard, the nutritionally complete all-in-one organic fertilizer made with ethically derived NPK, beneficial bacteria, crop boosting fungi, humic acid, and silica. Climate Guard uses cutting-edge microbiology and ethically derived plant nutrition to produce the same results as conventional fertilizers without the negative environmental impacts. Each Climate Guard pellet is infused with a high-performance blend of living organisms that will continue building a rich ecosystem in your soil long after application. Available in 7.5 and 15-pound bags, Climate Guard is delivered directly to your door and available for order at shopjohnnyappleseed.com. That's shopjohnnyappleseed.com. Thanks for listening to The Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show is brought to you by the following Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy you're with us today. Holly, the uh, key, one of the keys to a healthy soil is good fertile, so- or, uh, good fertile soil, but also hydration. Absolutely. So if your plants could talk, they might say that they could use more water, being properly watered. And, you know, maybe they have too much or too little. How do you water properly? We take the guesswork out of watering by using the tree dipper. The tree dipper is a revolutionary watering system that uh, stabilizes soil moisture by taking up excess water and slowly releasing that water into your plants or your soil over time. And so what happens is that you have the tree diaper that's filled with filled up from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. So you don't need any pipes, hoses, electricity, whether you're a first time gardener or advanced tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. It's made in the USA. You can find all the sizes they have available at tree diaper.com. That is tree diaper.com. Tree diaper will keep your plants happy. Well, in addition to using the tree diaper, that will help hydrate the soil, which your soil is alive, Holly. And that may be people may not be aware of that. They, you know, they think, oh, earthworms there. I know there's worms or a couple of grubs, but that's about it. But there's a whole lot more than just worms in the soil. It's alive. So your soil is a living and kind of breathing thing in a way. Um, So the biggest thing that we want to talk about here is not just about what's in your soil, but minimal soil disturbance. Now, some of you till twice a week and three times on Sunday. Uh, you, you, You are an active tiller of the soil for a variety of reasons, from weed control to variety of nutrients, mixing nutrients and everything else. We choose to do minimal soil disturbance, which means that if we have a root crop, we will dig that root crop up. If we have a weed or weeds, we will 
attempt to remove the weeds with a garden fork, not a tiller or a shovel that will um, hurt the soil structure. We'll try to limit it as much as possible. And or sometimes we don't even loosen the soil to remove weeds. We simply cut the weeds off and stress the weeds out in order for them to die naturally so we don't have soil disturbances. Right. And that's exactly what we do. And you want to keep in mind that your soil is an entire ecosystem, which uh, basically just means um, that it's living. It lives with, I can't think of the word here, with itself. And it produces. It's self-sustainable. Self-sustainable. We mess it up. Right. And it's just like, you know, if you think about your backyard, um, the leaves fall down, they feed the soil, the leaves come back, and you cut the grass, the grass grows, and the grass feeds maybe some rabbits, or I don't I don't know what rabbits eat, but, um, and then the rabbits then feed another animal, and the animal the possibly chain. feeds us, so there's a food chain, food chain is an ecosystem, so same thing in your soil. So Million, yes. Millions and millions of bacteria in your garden soil. And 45% uh, is minerals that, you know, it can be clay, silt, sand, gravel, stone, can be a lot of things in that soil. Right. And that's what's important is that that is 45% of your soil is those minerals. And minerals, whether they are nitrogen, potassium, phosphate, uh, micronutrients, magnesium, copper, uh, sulfur, or macronutrients, there has to be a certain amount of those in your garden in order for plants, whether you're planting them or grass or trees, for them to have successful growth. Just like as humans, we have to have a balanced diet. We just can't live our lives living on potato chips or carrots, and we have to have a balance, just like plants. Right, and that's that's just it. And you may know this about your soil. You may know that you have rocky soil, or you have clay soil, or you have... um, a one inch of topsoil and clay soil beneath that because you dug it and you were like, I can't grow anything in here. So I'm going to build raised beds. Or I'm going to do containers. Or I'm going to um, do straw bale. So and this and is even if you've got grow bags or containers, Holly, there's still life in a one gallon grow bag or a hundred gallon grow bag. It's not just in the soil. It's anything that the soil is in. Right, but that's the thing is that you might choose, you might know that you have clay soil right. and that's why you're not growing in it and why you have done some some other method and you might hear from, you know, your friend or family member who's like, you know, I can't grow my soil cuz it's clay soil or it's too rocky or it's too sandy and these are this is not uncommon. It kind of depends on where you live. I know certain parts even in our area there's some more there's more clay soil and there is better soil. And it just depends, You even within a 10-mile radius, of what you ended up with. Right. And soil contains a lot of minerals, but it doesn't have a whole lot of organic material. That's why it's so dense. And that's why it retains moisture much more rapidly and sometimes too quickly for proper plant growth that they are getting drowned out. Right. And so, yeah, so that's the other part is the what else is in your soil is 25. Yeah, because we got to get to 100% here. Yeah. 25% of it is water. So obviously this can vary depending on a um, how much rainfall you have and b how much if you don't have a lot of rainfall are you adding water to your soil or watering your garden or watering your plants whatever um, so that is a big reason why it can vary but it's about twenty five percent and the next one will surprise a lot of people it's air which a part uh, which I think is um, is surprising but that's when I say it's living and breathing because. It does have air, and this is an essential ingredient for living organisms because you have living organisms in your soil, and they need air. Um, Just how it works. Even the the tiniest decomposer fungi needs air. And then we are left with 5%, which is organic matter. Now, this varies based on where you're at in the country. Some of you may have organic matter that is less than 1% or can be as high as 5 or even 10% based on how much work you have put into your garden soil. Is there too much? Can there be too much? Well, if you have too much organic matter, um, 
there can be potentially problems there as well. But most of us don't have to worry about that. Right. And so this is important because we can talk about how we can add more organic matter. But this is what the decomposers and the worms and the fungi is what they live off of. They live off this organic matter. And the, you know, if you want to, what, what is the ideal percentile for organic matter? University uh, of Mich- uh, the University of Missouri Extension suggests about four to six percent is the ideal. Uh, about four to six percent of the soil is preferred in that realm. Two to three percent of soil in the lawns and four to six in the uh, garden. So keep that in mind. Right. Absolutely. And so what you can do to increase your organic matter is you can add compost you can add leaves you can add coffee grounds you can add your own compost your own homemade compost you could even take your kitchen scraps and you can dig a little uh, trench put those kitchen scraps in there and that they will break down quite quickly but they will also invite the worms what let's talk about worms for a minute here worms are one of the probably one of the few if not only visible things in which you can turn a a shovel full of soil over and go oh look there's something moving in that worms have and we're not even going to get in the hammerhead worms or the jumping worms we're just talking about <laughs> traditional earthworms because that's a whole nother episode for a whole nother mess of problems that we a lot of people are dealing with uh in pretty much all corners of the country worms native worms what we grew up with have a tremendous amount of um, ability to change bad soil into good soil with just a little help from us. Right. And that that's exactly it. You need to, quote unquote, invite the worms. And that you can do that by putting that um, compost or worm food, essentially, into the soil. So that's leaves, coffee grounds, um, banana peels, what have you. And you can just layer it. You can put a couple inches on top. You don't have to work it in. Right. And how I don't I we don't they they know and they come. Right. The worms they know that there's food there, that's a food source and they come, they build their home and they're not going to oversaturate themselves and all of a sudden you'll have, you know, a few worms and then you'll have a lot of worms. So that's what we encourage you to do is to feed the worms. Worms, they break this down. Then their worm castings, which is basically their worm waste, worm poop, whatever you want to call it, is there. And that adds to your organic matter. And it's very pure, natural. Um, not, I guess it is it, kind of a fertilizer. Yeah, it's a natural it is a fertilizer. Yep. So fun fact, Holly, how deep can worms go? Eight feet deep. So okay. they'll come from eight feet deep or go eight feet deep or whatever. And that's pretty deep. It's uh, yeah, a lot of pathways in which oxygen and water can travel through your soil during rain or watering. Well, one thing, Holly, that uh, summer's here and the, we're going to have some problems, if not already for most of you. And that is those uh, pests going to be destroying your yard and garden which is those various weevils beetles boars including those japanese beetles they're ready for your picnic are you right and what better way to prevent those pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larva grub gone is an easy to apply granular product that can spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders developed by phylum bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria grub gone is a non-chemical bt product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests and it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. And if you've already got those beetles flying around your yard, and if you don't, you're going to have them pretty soon. Beetle Gone is the answer. It's an organic water dispersible powder that, here, listen to this, you can spray directly onto your edible plants. Find out more about fi- find out more about Grub Gone, Beetle Gone, and all the products they have available at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L. OM bioproducts.com. And when you go there and you purchase, we have worked a deal out with them where you can save 10% off your order by using the code Garden Talk 10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. In just a few moments, author Teresa Rooney will be with us. You're listening to Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Have Show. Have a gardening question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24 7. 
just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now, 1-800-927-SHOW. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloominteasyplants.com. A non-selective herbicide that is also USDA certified? You bet. No More Weeds by Naturally Green Products. The same great company that brings you no more bugs, no more weeds. Kills weeds with no harsh chemicals, no glyphosate. No More Weeds is a commercial grade vinegar base with a propriety sticking agent. Great around pools, decks, patios, etc. Visit natgreenproducts.com, enter promo code WEEDS, W-E-E-D-S, and buy three one-gallon size units, get the fourth one free. Spring is around the corner, folks, and Algae Men reminds you that this year, when it's time for spring cleaning, don't forget about the outside of your house. Algae Men is southeastern Wisconsin's go-to for exterior cleaning, including roofs, siding, decks, and concrete. So if you spot ugly black stains or green splotchy stuff on your home, let Algae Men get rid of it for you. We can restore the area back to its original look, not only in a timely manner, but also at an affordable cost. For a free estimate, visit us today at algaemen.com. Algae Men, we clean areas that you don't want to. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest from their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code radio22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. Chapin has the tools you need to water, feed, and protect your garden. We make equipment for lawn and garden care. And And we are always innovating to help make your next growing season a success. Our newest products are the 5010 Rose Duster, watering tools including hose nozzles, sprinklers, and timers, the mixes on Exit Backpack Sprayer that mixes concentrate as you spray. You can find all products at www.chapinmfg.com, major online retailers, home improvement stores, and hardware stores near you. Japanese beetles show up in summer for a feeding frenzy in your garden. Garden, and they are the worst party guest, feeding on leaves, then laying eggs in your lawn for next year. Japanese beetles can decimate your plants and trees. Protect your plants with Japanese beetle traps from rescue. New this year, rescue has refilled lures to use the same trap again the next year. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular rescue fly and yellow jacket traps. Learn more at rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot C-O-M. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Use promo code Radio 10 to save 10% off your order. Show your body and monarch butterflies some love with milkweed balm made with milkweed seed oil to promote relaxation and muscle recovery. Full of antioxidants and packed with powerful omega fatty acids to fight pain and inflammation. Milkweed balm is product-based conservation of wild monarch butterfly habitat. Visit milkweedbalm.com to find out more. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit propugger.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Teresa Rooney, moments away, but first, Simple Grow. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow to their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. 
Unlike any other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you're getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow all natural and odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor and outdoor use by the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload, you can find all the information at simplegrow.com. Well, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guest for this week. Teresa Rooney is a self taught lifelong gardener. She's a master gardener and has turned her small urban yard into a certified national wildlife habitat and home to an increasing number of welcome and unwelcome critters. She is also the author of The Guide to Humane Critter Control. Welcome to the program, Teresa Rooney. Thank you so much. I'm privileged to be here. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day, not only to educate Holly and myself, but also our listeners. Great. So we get a lot of questions about controlling deer. What are your best tips for keeping deer from your homegrown veggies? Well, I am super lucky because I live near a big city. So I have no deer in my area. So that's one option. But a lot of people can't move to the city or they're out in the suburbs where there's deer. So there's a lot of great things you can do. First of all, you want to grow plants that aren't deer deer candy look at those resistant plants and i have a book for you it's a free book that you can download it's called the best plants for 30 tough sites it was developed by the minnesota master gardeners years ago and there's one section in there on deer resistant plants and that that would be good for anybody in the country as long as you have deer that will work Right. Zone three and four, but a lot of those, they have other, you can grow them in warmer climates, or you might find a similar species that you can grow that we can't grow up here because it's not hardy. So do that. Next option, if you're if you're not going to do that, um, you can take bird netting, or it's also called deer netting. It's like monofilament fishing, fishing line uh, in a, in a, in a grid pattern and just take two sticks, bamboo sticks, six, seven feet high, divide it or um, spread it between those two sticks and deer are creatures of habits. So when they keep coming into your yard at 304 every morning, they come over from Bob Smith's house in the corner, Northwest corner of your house. You can put this up where they come in. Their noses are really sensitive. So they will bonk into this deer netting and they won't know what's going on. Now they may knock it down. It's okay. It's just deer netting. It'll fall down. You can put it up in the morning, but eventually they'll get frustrated, always bonking into this stuff. You can also, and then they'll stop coming to your house and they'll skip your house and go on to the next, the next treat factory that they have. You can also take the same deer netting and suspend it like a trapeze uh, net over your hostas, suspend it up maybe six or eight inches above the hostas or however far so that the hostas can grow up. Do this first thing in the spring. Trust me, in two or three weeks, you will not even notice the deer netting out there. But again, the deer will notice it. They'll try to graze on your hostas and they'll bonk into it. The flowers can come up through it. You can leave the flowers or you can cut them off, whatever you want to do. And then the nice thing is, is if you really like to clean up your gardens in the fall and you leave this netting on your on your um, hostas, it will actually grab the leaves as the leaves come down. You can then move the netting and just plop the leaves out onto the lawn and mow them over with your lawnmower and you don't even have to rake leaves. So it's kind of a two for one there. Well, good information. Can, Go ahead. Yes. Yep. Okay, I got a bunch of other All stuff. Right. Um, use a scarecrow. That's a motion-activated water sprinkler. Just remember, if you're going out there, turn off the sp- scarecrow. Unless, <laughs> it's nine, unless it's 90 degrees and you just need a little cool off, that's okay, too. You can use all kinds of things that have bad smells to them, you know, the, the repellents that are fragrant. Change them up every three weeks. Remember to reapply them as needed. In the wintertime, you'll need to reapply them more frequently if you have cold weather because the fragrance just doesn't last that long. So instead of every three weeks, you may need to reapply them every two weeks or every one week, and you can just apply them that way. Um, You can also use fences in such a way where the deer can't see what's on the other side of the fence. And so then they don't can't jump over because they don't know where they're landing. There could be a whole pack of wolves over there, and they don't know that. 
So they're not going to jump over. It could be a cliff. They're not going to jump over if they can't see where they're landing on the other side of the fence. So nice shrubs on a fence or even even a thicket of shrubs, the deer can't jump over it. And if you do have that thicket, turn it into a fedge, which is a combination of a fence and a hedge. And just put things with thorns, things you don't care that the deer eat on the outside of that, that shrub level, that shrubbery boundary. And then grow your stuff that you really love on the inside of the shrubbery. And the deer won't push their way through. Those are just some things you can use to get rid of deer in your yard. A lot of good information there. Now you talk about dangerous pests to look out for. What are some of those common ones and how do we know what to do when we encounter them? Okay, so uh, one that we have a lot of here in Minnesota, and I know in the upper northeast, is ticks. Deer ticks, um, they, they can harbor and ve- vector a lot of diseases, so you don't want to get limes, you don't want other things. We have nice little critters like opossums in our yards, in our areas. Opossums are actually immune to Lyme disease. They will eat ticks. They run through the tall grass, the ticks fall on them. They can eat all the ticks on their body, 100, 150, 200 ticks every night. So if you have an opossum, try to live with it. They are wonderful to prevent ticks. Get some guinea fowls. Fowl. They also like t- ticks. That's a kind of chicken. So if you can get chickens, that's good too. Um, if you can't get chickens, I understand a lot of places you can't get chickens. Um, otherwise, just then use the repellents and then dress appropriately for ticks and make sure you always yourself for ticks when you come in. Another thing that a lot of people have is raccoons. And raccoons can be a problem in and of themselves, but they're even worse if they start to use your yard as their latrine. If you find masses of um, raccoon scat, their poop laying around, that is extremely dangerous. There are extremely bad diseases that that poop can carry. So you want to then Put on a full hazmat suit or have somebody with a hazmat suit clean that up and prevent them from leaving their scat in that area again. It is a terrible thing. You need to double bag it or triple bag it, get rid of it in the city trash. I'd even pull up some of the soil and throw that away too. But do remember to use all your masks and all your your suiting and just be really careful with that. Then people think, well, then you have things like uh, yellow jackets. Now, I used to be terrified of bees and yellow jackets and everything else. Then one day I figured out what yellow jackets do, and it's like, okay, they're not so bad. If you know where they are, just avoid them. If you have to get rid of them, use the appropriate method to get rid of them. But usually if you can avoid their area, especially in those seasons when they're really grumpy because they're trying to find food and they know winter's coming and they're trying to to find the last bits of food, uh, your barbecues, your everything else, just try to ignore that area. That's something you can do. And if you are anyone who has any problems with allergies, make sure you always always have your medications or EpiPens. Mosquitoes. Now, mosquitoes can carry a lot of diseases too. And in Minnesota, one of our state birds is a mosquito because they're so huge and they're so prevalent. Even in the city, we can get them. So, of course, no standing water. Except for this one little trick I just learned about. You take a bucket, you put some standing water in it, you put some water in it, you throw some straw into it, maybe even make the straw go down a little bit with a rock or something like that so it doesn't float. But you also add a mosquito dunk. Then you cover the top of the bucket with either chicken wire or a hardware cloth so the mosquitoes can still get in and lay their eggs. But because there's a mosquito dunk in there, they're laying their eggs and the bacillus will kill the larva of the mosquitoes. Make sure you put it in an area where pets aren't going to knock it over, kids aren't going to play in the water, things like that. But that can be a real good way to attract some of those females that are laying eggs and then have their larva be killed. Those are just some things. If there's another scary or or a dangerous animal you want me to talk about, I'll try to do it. Those are just some that I thought pests that people may be running into everywhere. No, definitely. That's been very helpful and really great reminder, especially about the ticks, because, you know, a lot of us um, are just getting back outdoors and it's always a, a good reminder to to think about that stuff. Um, so your book, The Guide to Human Critter, Humane Critter Control, can you tell us more about it and why our listeners should pick up a copy or just a, a helpful, uh, you know, interesting okay. tip? 
Sure, sure. Um, this started, uh, I never thought, I always wanted to write a book, but had no idea. But anyway, um, what happened was I have a small yard. I uh, had a huge elm tree in the back. It had to be taken down because of Dutch elm, and I was devastated because I had a be beautiful shade serenity garden. Uh, in the meantime, I got interested in birds and things like that, so I wanted to make my yard a national wildlife habitat. So I was planting a bunch of shrubs, and with the tree being down, then I had some areas for for uh, sun plants, like trees and herbs and things that I couldn't grow before, fruit trees. I was so excited. Then I started getting really mad because... The squirrels learned after about four years that green apricots could be eaten. So they had ignored my apricot trees up until then. And, oh, it was so frustrated. And the raccoons were taking the peaches. And I was just so mad. And, and I was so frustrated with myself. And then one day I thought, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a slow learner. This takes me some time to put two and two together. And you created a wildlife habitat. And now you're upset the wildlife is here. <laughs> That doesn't make a lot of sense. So I had to change my perception. I had to say, hey, I made a great wildlife habitat. How can I make it better? So in the meantime, I had been contacted to, to write the book. And I wanted the book not to be uh, somebody lecturing, like from on high, saying, do this and do that. And, and this is the way to do it. And it's the only way to do it. That's not what this book is. This book is, how can we change your perception of what you're seeing in your yard? How can I help you understand using integrated pest management? I want it to be more like just a conversation between gardening friends. We're sitting there sipping tea and we're talking about, oh, we've got aphids on, you know, the honey locust again. Well, in, the, in my area, honey locust trees are a, they're a boulevard tree. I have one right outside. It leaves out very late, and by that time, all of the aphids from the south have been brought up by the winds, and they find all this juicy, lush, tiny baby honey locust leaves, and they proceed to enjoy the honey locust leaves. It's a big tree. She doesn't care. I do have to deal with aphids falling on me if I'm out there gardening or, or the, um, the, honey, the honeydew. But it happens every year. It's not a big deal. It just is what it is. And in the meantime, I know there's an awful lot of insects and birds up in that tree enjoying aphids. So everybody's winning except the aphids, of course. So I, I just want the book to be just a conversation between friends. If I can change your perception of a problem you're having, help you see a way to get around it, to enjoy it as a as a opportunity. Yeah, I do a lot of permaculture and there's not problems, there are opportunities. So if something fails, it's not a failure, it's an opportunity to find a different way to do something. And that's what this book is, just changing your perception of what a pest is and how you can work with it and how you can anticipate it. Absolutely. So we are talking with Teresa Rooney, a self-taught lifelong gardener and author of the Guide to Humane Critter Control. Well, now a question I have is, what is your biggest pet uh, pest control myth? What wise tell? And how can people, how can you correct that? Uh, what, what would that be? Okay, I have, I have two. Okay. The first one is, is everybody throwing Epsom salts in their yard? Just stop. Just stop. Right now. Everybody, just, just stop. Get a soil test. Go by the soil test. Follow the science. Epsom salts can, can interfere with calcium uptake, so your tomatoes might get more blossom and rot. It, it can influence pH, the pH of the soil in such a way that the, in, the uh, bio, the bio um, activity in your, in your soil changes. If you need to s change the soil pH, use soil sulfur instead, not the magnesium salts in Epsom salts. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. I, I get so, I get livid. As a master gardener, I run into pet peeves or I run into these myths all the time. Another one is what to do when the when the hostas have holes in them from slugs. My first ask is, does it matter? The hostas are still alive. It's not a big deal. Okay, if it matters, grow hostas that slugs don't care as much for grow the blue hostas that have a, co a coating on them a waxy coating slugs don't like that they don't like the thicker leaved hostas if you have a few hostas that the slugs do like lay some newspaper down every day 
lift it up in the morning, damp newspaper, lift it up or a board, damp newspaper or a board and, and lift that up in the morning. You'll find the baby slugs early in the season, scrape them off into the driveway and the birds will be happy and you'll, you'll impact the, the populations of the hostas are the slugs. You can also then the then you come up with the eggshells and the beer traps and it's like, oh please people. Hoss, uh, snails and and slugs have a big mucus coating and they can glide over eggshells like there's nothing for the problem. Yes, they can drown in the beer traps, but you know, save the beer for drinking and use use another method that's messy. The dogs can eat it. It just doesn't work. So now that you have slugs, invite another diverse group into your yard. See, can you bring in frogs? Can you bring in toads? Can you bring in snakes? Yes, even the mice will eat the slugs. Birds will eat the slugs. A lot of birds eat the slugs. If you find a skunk rum rummaging through your hostas at night, don't scare it away. Let it eat the slugs. You know, raccoons will eat the slugs. So when you find one pest, try to diversify what you have coming into your yard because then even more of them will put pressure on that pest. And understand if you don't have that pest in the beginning, you're not going to have the diversity of the critters that eat that pest. Um, I had uh, an uh, aphids on uh, a viburnum and if I kept killing the aphids the ladybugs would never come because why would they lay their eggs in some place that has two aphids in it they want an all-you-can-eat buffet of aphids for their larva so that's where they would lay their eggs and then the larva would clean up the aphids in no no time at all and I wouldn't have aphid juice all over my fingers from squishing them so just you just want to if you have a problem let the problem take care of itself that's what I say. And iron phosphate can work on slugs if you need it, like Sluggle. Use the iron phosphate for a version of that. Fantastic. Well, we really enjoyed having you on the program. Today, can you tell our listeners where to find more information about you and your book? Sure. Um, you can get my book on Amazon. Uh, you can also reach me on Facebook. It's Teresa Rooney, T-H-E-R-E-S-A Rooney, R-O-O-N-E-Y. Currently, I have a sunflower and a very faint moon as my picture. And if you really want to learn more about me, get my book. Consider other books like uh, Gaia's Garden on Permaculture by Toby, Toby Hemingway. Read Doug Tallamy's book, Bringing Back Nature, I'm sorry, Bringing Nature Home, Bill Bartholomew's, Mel Bartholomew's book on square foot gardening, Best Plants for 30 Tough Sight. Go, go to the National Wildlife and certify your yard. By reading these books and going to that, you will know exactly how my mind works. But do contact me on Facebook if you want to. Well, Teresa, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered, not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And we thank you very much for that. It has been my pleasure. Thank you both. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. It is The Gardening with Joey and Holly. The Garden Question Radio Give Show. Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24 7. Just dial 1 800 927 SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1 800 927 SHOW. 90% of the world's flowering plants require pollination to reproduce. Without pollinators, we humans would not survive. Here at Finding Nectar, a Denver suburb-based nursery providing flowering plants that are bee, butterfly, moth, and bat friendly. We are striving to get more pollinators into the backyards of Colorado. Together, we can increase the pollinating population one plant at a time. Affordable plants. Check all the plants out at 1550 Highway 72 in Arveda and at FindingNectar.com. Have you ever tried to carry all your tools and supplies on your tractor? You fumble around looking for the right one, unsafely holding them while you drive. Big Tool Rack developed a range of carry-all systems that attaches to your compact tractor in seconds, creating a mobile workstation that allows you to safely carry your tools and supplies. Big Tool Rack's telescoping wheel system and three 
three-point hitch connections allows you to quickly attach and detach the carry-all system for easy storage. Working around the house, the homestead, or the farm, Big Tool Rack has your back and all your tools. Use code MYRACK5 for 5% off purchases at BigToolRack.com. Find out why we're built to haul it all. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCodingsUSA.com. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. A little bit of summer is what the whole year's all about. Barbecues, parties with friends. The fun is endless. Unless the sun or thunderstorms have damaged your outdoor furniture. Keep it looking brand new with custom protective covers from coversinall.com. They have fabric choices for days that are 100% waterproof, coated to protect against sun and can be custom designed for any size or shape and placing or removing them. Easy peasy. Visit coversinall.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% on your purchase. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zyme, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rat, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. You got a question, we've got an answer. It's time for your questions, our answers. You want to send it in, you can do that two ways. Gardentalkradio at gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, or you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number, 1 800 927 Show, 1 800 927 7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order is now proclamationgoods.com. All right, let's go to the hotline, and we have a question from a listener. Listen to us on the Roar of the Rockies, 1360 AM, over in Colorado. I'm in northern Colorado. A few years ago, I bought clearance plants at Lowe's, not realizing what I was doing. I brought uh, spider mites to my yard and am now um, heavily into gardening again, and um, they're everywhere. So I'm um, wondering how I can get them out of my plum tree. Uh, yes, how do I get the spider mites out of my plum tree? i um, been listening to the ways to get them out of my garden, but the um, one I'm not sure of is that plum tree. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for giving us a call, and here is the answer. Sure. So you want to use something um, like Dr. Zymes or the amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator, and this is a net, This is made of 
um, naturally occurring organic materials in combination with citric acid and other biologically simulating ingredients to produce um, a fungicide slash miticide with multiple modes of action. So it will get rid of the spider mites. You can use it up to the day of harvest, the day of harvest, spray it right on your edible plants. And if you're concerned about, is it going to work? We got that covered for you. Drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. You can get two, uh, you can get uh, two eliminator, super concentrated two ounce samples for free. You pay, you pay for shipping and handling and you will be hooked on it. It is a product that works time and time again. All right, let's get to our next question here. So I had my insulin delivered and it was packed with Enviro Ice. Has anyone ever used this as a fertilizer? Being a nitrogen base, can I put it on my garden or maybe I need to dilute it? What can I do? I would dilute it with water and then work it into the soil around your plants. Um, I'm not, I've seen this before. I'm not certain of the all of the, the details along with it, but there are companies that are going in this direction so they can make a lesser impact on the, uh, on the world. Uh, so I would dilute it and feed your plants with it. And with that being said, we are out of time and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today or want to revisit it? Do that by going to our parent website, which is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com or clicking on the uh, season six tab at the top of the page. Or you can send us an email. Garden Talk Radio Gmail dot com. We'll get you a link to the program. Tune in next week to the show. We're going to go over our eggshells. Really good for your garden and the different world the world of mulches our guest will be author meg cohen and we'll answer your garden questions so until next week for holly baird i'm joy baird and we will see you in the garden